Here's lesson three in our unit on quadratic functions. In this lesson, you're going to learn the process of completing the square. Completing the square is a process for changing a standard form quadratic, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, into a vertex form quadratic, y equals a times x minus h squared plus k. Before I teach you the process of getting between those two formats of a quadratic, let's very carefully look at the vertex form equation and notice within that vertex form, there is a binomial squared. That is going to be the most important thing we have to try and create in order to get the standard form quadratic into vertex form. Within the standard form quadratic, we are going to have to create what's called a perfect square trinomial so that when we factor that perfect square trinomial, we get that binomial squared. And if you look here, I've shown you what format a perfect square trinomial takes. It's of the format a squared plus or minus 2ab plus b squared. If we can get a quadratic in that format, then when we factor it, we will get a binomial squared. We'll get a plus or minus b all squared. So the process of completing the square is going to involve creating that perfect square trinomial within the standard form equation so that it can be factored to create the vertex form equation. So before we do the process of completing the square, let's just look at a couple of these perfect square trinomials that I have here and analyze the relationship between the three terms. That's gonna help you understand why we do what we do when we actually start completing the square. What I want you to notice in these two quadratics specifically is that the middle term of each of them is equal to two times the square roots of the first and last terms. For it to be a perfect square trinomial, it has to follow that format. The middle term, the 2ab term, is two times the product of the square root of the first and last terms. So let me show that relationship with these. The middle term of the first one, 10x, is equal to two times the square root of the first term times the square root of the last term. That's what makes it a perfect square trinomial. And let me simplify the right side so you can see that that is in fact 10x. The square root of x squared is just x, and the square root of 25 is five. 2 times x times 5 is 10x. And let's see that relationship for this quadratic where this one's of the format a squared minus 2ab plus b squared, but that middle term, the 12x, is still equal to 2 times the square root of the first term times the square root of the last term. Let me simplify the right side so you can see it's equal. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of 36 is 6. 2 times x times 6 is 12x. So now that you understand that relationship, let's practice creating some perfect square trinomials. In example one, it says determine the value of k that would meet, make each quadratic a perfect square trinomial, and then factor the trinomial. In order for part a to be a perfect square trinomial, I know the middle term, 14x, would have to be equal to 2 times the square root of the first term times the square root of the last term. And now that I have an equation, let me try and solve for k. 14x equals 2, square root of x squared is x, and I still have my factor of root k. Notice both sides of the equation have a factor of x. Let me show you that we can get rid of those factors of x just by dividing both sides of the equation by x. That would get rid of the factors of x from both sides of the equation. And what I'm left with is 14 equals 2 root k. And to isolate the root k, it's currently being multiplied by two. So I would divide the two to the other side. And 14 divided by two is seven. So I have seven equals root k. And to isolate the k that's currently being square rooted, I'd have to do the inverse of square rooting, which is squaring. So I'll do seven squared equals k. And seven squared is 49. So a k value of 49 is what would make the quadratic be a perfect square trinomial. Now that I've solved for what value of k makes it be a perfect square trinomial, let me sub in that value of k into the quadratic and factor it. So my quadratic is x squared plus 14x plus 49. If in fact we've created a perfect square trinomial, this should factor to a binomial squared. Let's try and factor it and see if that works. Well, if I'm trying to factor a quadratic like this, I would try and find numbers that multiply to 49 and add to 14. The numbers that satisfy that product in sum are seven and seven. Seven times seven is 49. 7 plus 7 is 14. So this quadratic would factor to x plus 7 times another x plus 7, which we could simplify. It's the same factor twice, so I could write that as x plus 7 squared. 
Notice, if we have a perfect square trinomial, when we factor it, we get a binomial squared. And when we're going from standard form to vertex form, that's what we're trying to create. We're trying to create a perfect square trinomial so that we can get that x minus h squared part of the vertex form equation. All right, let's try part b now. Part b, once again, we're going to try and solve for the value of k that makes it a perfect square trinomial. In order for it to be a perfect square trinomial, I know the middle term, the 24x, has to be equal to 2 times the square root of the first term times the square root of the last term. And as we go through the second example, you're going to see the same type of algebra that we had in the first, and then hopefully we can come up with a shortcut to avoid having to do this whole process each time we want to create a perfect square trinomial. Let me simplify the right side of this equation. The square root of x squared is x. Notice both sides of the equation have a factor of x. We could divide both sides by x, and those factors of x would be gone. I'm going to now divide the two to the other side. So I have 12 equals root k. And then to isolate the k, I would have to move the square root to the other side by doing the inverse of square rooting, which is squaring. So notice k is 12 squared, which is 144. And then in my quadratic, if k was 144, to factor it, I'd be looking for numbers that multiply to 144 and add to negative 24. And the numbers that satisfy that product in sum are negative 12 and negative 12. They have a product of 144 and add to negative 24. So my quadratic would factor to x minus 12 times another x minus 12. And that gives us x minus 12 squared. It gives us a binomial squared. Let's really carefully analyze this process for both of these and see if we can come up with a shortcut. And I've very specifically done a couple parts of this process in blue. Notice if we look about halfway through the process of each, each of these, I see the coefficient of the middle term, right? I see 14 and 24. They're getting cut in half. And then after they get cut in half, notice a couple lines below that, that number then gets squared. That's the shortcut we're going to use. You can always calculate the constant term that makes a quadratic be a perfect square by squaring half of the coefficient of the x term. Just cut it in half, square it, and you've got the constant that makes it a perfect square trinomial. And I put a note there. Notice this shortcut is only going to work if the coefficient of our x squared term is 1. If it's not 1, we'll deal with it by common factoring it out. And you'll see that in our process for completing the square. So now I think you're ready to do a completing the square question. Here are all the steps to completing the square. I'll reference those as we do our questions, but we're going to follow this algorithm as we go through each of the completing the squares questions. Example two says to rewrite each quadratic and vertex form by completing the square. Then we'll state the vertex, whether it's a max or min point, and also state the axis of symmetry. So let's get these standard form quadratics into vertex form. Step one when completing the square is to put brackets around the first two terms. x squared plus 2x needs to go in brackets. That constant of 7 goes outside the brackets. Step 2 is if there is a coefficient in front of the x squared that's not 1, we would have to common factor it out. But the coefficient of the x squared is already 1, so we can move on to the next step. The next step in the process is going to be making what's in the brackets we want to make that become a perfect square trinomial. So we're going to have to figure out what could I have there so that this quadratic becomes a perfect square trinomial. And if you think back to the last question we did, we learned a shortcut for figuring out what the constant term could be for it to be a perfect square trinomial. You just look at the coefficient of the middle term, so in this case 2, you cut it in half and then square it. So half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. So if we had a plus 1 in the brackets at the end there, that would make the quadratic in the brackets be a perfect square trinomial, and that's what we want. So if I put a plus 1 here, that makes it a perfect square trinomial, and I could factor it, and I'll get a vertex form equation. The only problem with that is now this line is not equivalent to the line above. What I need to do to make it equivalent is not just add 1, but to keep it equivalent to the line above, I would also have to subtract 1. Now this line is equivalent to the line above. Plus 1 minus 1 is 0, so it's equivalent. I don't really want that minus 1 inside the brackets. So what we do is we get it outside of the brackets by multiplying it by whatever the coefficient of the factor in brackets is. And in this case, the coefficient of that factor in brackets is just 1. So to get the negative 1 out of the brackets, we just do 1 multiplied by negative 1, and that gets it out of the brackets. So I have y equals 
x squared plus 2x plus 1. That's what I want. That's the perfect square trinomial. And then this negative 1, we're taking out of the brackets by multiplying it by the coefficient of 1. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. And then don't forget that plus 7 that's still out there. And now inside the brackets, I have a quadratic that's a perfect square trinomial. If I were trying to factor it, I'd be looking for numbers that multiply to 1 and add to 2. And if we have done the question right so far, it should be the same number twice that satisfies the product and sum. That's what makes it a perfect square trinomial. 1 and 1 multiply to 1 and add to 2. So when we factor that quadratic, it will go to x plus 1 times another x plus 1. And instead of writing the same factor twice, you could just write it once with a squared above it. And negative 1 plus 7 is positive 6. So that's the vertex form equation of the quadratic, right? We have a binomial squared. And now that it's in vertex form, I know that the vertex is equal to h and k. h is negative 1, k is 6. So my vertex is negative 1, 6. And because the coefficient of the binomial squared is positive 1, since it's positive, I know my quadratic opens up, which means the vertex is a minimum point. So I'll write the vertex negative 1, 6 is a minimum. And it also wants to know the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line that goes through the vertex. Since the vertex has an x-coordinate of negative 1, I know the x-coordinate of any point on the vertical line is negative 1. So I can define that vertical line as x equals negative 1. Let's try another one. Step 1 is going to be putting the first two terms in brackets. 5x squared minus 30x. That goes in brackets. And that constant term, positive 41, goes outside of the brackets. The next step is going to be whatever is the coefficient of x squared, we need to common factor it out. So I need to divide both the terms in brackets by the 5 that I'm common factoring out. And that would give me x squared minus 6x. Now in the brackets, I need to create my perfect square trinomial. I know that for it to be a perfect square trinomial, I'm going to need to add a constant at the end that is half of the middle term squared. So half of 6 is 3, square it, I get 9. But to keep this line equivalent to the line above, I can't just add 9. I would also have to subtract 9 so that, that what I added actually equals 0. Now, I don't actually want that negative 9 inside the brackets. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by the coefficient in front, 5, to get it outside of the brackets. So what I have is y equals 5 times x squared minus 6x plus 9. And then I'm getting the negative 9 out by multiplying it by the 5 in front. That equals negative 45. And then don't forget that plus 41 that's still out there. Now all I have left to do, um, besides simplifying those constants at the end, is to factor the perfect square trinomial that I have inside the brackets. If we've done this right, when you look for your product and sum, so product of 9, sum of negative 6, you should get the same number twice that works. Negative 3 and negative 3 are the numbers that multiply to 9 and add to negative 6. So this would factor to 5 times x minus 3 times another x minus 3, but we wouldn't write the same factor twice. We would just write it once with a squared. And then negative 45 plus 41 is negative 4. Now that's in vertex form. I could state the vertex. The vertex is hk, which in this case is 3, negative 4. And since the coefficient of the binomial is positive, right, positive 5, I know the quadratic opens up, which means the vertex is at the bottom. It's a minimum point. And the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex, so the equation is x equals 3. Let's do two more. I'll do these ones a little more quickly. Put the first two terms in brackets, leave the constant term at the end, common factor out that coefficient of x squared. So divide both of the terms by negative 5. 20 divided by negative 5 is negative 4, so I've got minus 4x. Now I'm going to create a perfect square trinomial in the brackets by adding and subtracting half of the middle term squared. So half of 4 is 2, 2 squared is 4. So I'll need to add and subtract 4. I don't actually want the minus 4, so I'm going to need to get it outside of the brackets by multiplying it by that coefficient, negative 5. 
So what I have is negative 5 times the perfect square trinomial x squared minus 4x plus 4. And that negative 4 is outside of the brackets being multiplied by negative 5. That's positive 20. And now when I factor the quadratic that's in brackets, I'd be looking for numbers that multiply to 4 and add to negative 4. The numbers that do that are negative 2 and negative 2. So this would factor to x minus 2 times another x minus 2. But once again, we wouldn't write that factor twice. We would write it once with a squared. So that's now in vertex form. The vertex of this is 2, 22. And I know because the a value of this vertex form equation is negative, I know this quadratic is going to open down. So the vertex is at the top of it. So it is a max point. And the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals the x coordinate of the vertex, which is 2. The next one's going to be a little more difficult because we're going to have some fractions involved, but we'll follow the exact same process. Step one, we are going to put the first two terms in brackets. Step two, whatever the coefficient of the x squared is, we're going to common factor it out. Now, I know three doesn't go into eight evenly, but we are still going to have to divide both these terms by three. So three x squared divided by three is x squared. And eight x over three, we would just write as eight over three x. Now I'll need to create a perfect square trinomial by doing half of eight over three squared. So I'll need to add and subtract whatever half of eight over three squared is. So let me just do a little bit of work here to show you how we could figure that out. So we're going to have to do eight over three divided by two, which I'll write as two over one. And then that we're going to have to square. So that would be eight over three times one over two squared. So that would be four over three squared, which equals 16 over nine. So I know that's a little bit of work to figure it out, but I now know that 16 over nine is what would have to be the constant term for this quadratic to be a perfect square trinomial. So I'll add it and I'll subtract it to keep the equation equivalent to the line above but I want to get that negative 16 over 9 out of the bracket, so I'll multiply it by the 3 that's out front. So if y equals 3x squared plus 8 over 3x plus 16 over 9, and then 3 times negative 16 over 9 would be negative 48 over 9 minus 5, and negative 48 over 9, I could actually reduce that. 3 goes into both of those numbers. It goes into 48 16 times and into 9 3 times. And since I'm going to want to collect it with that minus 5, I'll rewrite that 5 with a denominator of 3, so I'll rewrite it as 15 over 3. Now another tricky part about this question is now going to be factoring that perfect square trinomial. Remember, we are looking for numbers who have a product of 16 over 9 and a sum of 8 over 3. Now if we look back at the last three examples, what I want you to notice is the number here always ends up being half of that coefficient. Okay. One is half of two and three is half of six. So the number that's gonna satisfy the product and sum is going to be half of that one. So what is half of eight over three? So I could do eight over three divided by two or multiply it by a half, same thing. And that gives me 4 over 3, right? I could reduce 8 over 2 to 4 over 1, and I just get 4 over 3. Notice that 4 over 3 times 4 over 3 is 16 over 9, and 4 over 3 plus 4 over 3 is 8 over 3. So we've found the number that satisfies the product and sum. So this would factor to x plus 4 over 3 times another x plus 4 over 3. So I'll write x plus 4 over 3 squared minus 31 over 3. So my vertex would be at negative 4 over 3, negative 31 over 3. And since the a value is positive, I know the quadratic opens up. So this vertex is a minimum point. And the axis of symmetry will be the vertical line that goes through the vertex. So it'll be x equals whatever the x coordinate of the vertex is, which is negative 4 over 3. So that's by far the most difficult one because it has fractions, but it's the same steps that are followed. Let's move on to our last example where it not only asks us to write it in vertex form, but it then asks us to graph the quadratic. 
So I'll start by converting these to vertex form by following the steps for completing the square. I'll put the first two terms in brackets, put the constant term at the end. The coefficient of the x squared is one, so I don't have to common factor anything out. I can just create my perfect square trinomial in the brackets by adding and subtracting half of six squared. So half of six is three, square it, I get nine. So that's now a perfect square trinomial. To keep it equivalent to the line above, I'll also subtract nine. I'll take the negative nine out of the brackets by multiplying it by the one in front. So out of the brackets, it's still a negative nine. And then when I factor the quadratic, I'd be looking for numbers that multiply to nine and add to six. And the numbers that do that are three and three. So this would factor to x plus three times another x plus three, which I'll write as x plus three squared. Negative nine plus eight is negative one. So now that it's in vertex form, I can write my vertex as negative three, negative one. My axis of symmetry is x equals negative three. Since the a value is positive one, I know that it opens up. Domain values x may take for quadratics. X can always be any real number. You can put anything you want in for x. Uh, it'll output a value of y for you. But the range, since it's a quadratic that opens up, I know the quadratic will always be at the y value of the vertex or above. So I can say y can be any real number given it's greater than or equal to the y coordinate of the vertex, negative one. It'll never be below the vertex. In my table of values that I'll use to graph it, I'm gonna put the vertex in the middle and then choose two points to the left and right of the vertex. Since the vertex has an x coordinate of negative three, I'll choose a couple x coordinates to the left of negative three and a couple to the right of negative three. And now what I'll do is I'll plug these values into either my standard form or my vertex form of the quadratic and calculate the value for y. Since my vertex form is right here, I'll just plug them into that. So if I plug in negative two for x, I would get one squared minus one, that's zero. I know if one to the right of the vertex, y is zero, one to the left of the vertex, y would be zero as well because parabolas are symmetrical. If I plug in negative one for x, I would have negative one plus three, that's two, square it to get four, minus one is three. If two to the right of the vertex, y is three, two to the left of the vertex, y is three as well. If I plot these points, and I'll just assume my scale for x and y is going by ones, my vertex would be at negative three, negative one, and then I have points at negative two, zero, negative four, zero, negative one, three, and negative five, three. And just because I see I could fit more points on this graph, when x is zero, I'd have three squared, nine minus one is eight. So I'll plot a point up at eight when x is zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I know over here, when x is negative six, y would also be eight. So here's what the graph of this quadratic looks like. Part B. Let's start by changing it to vertex form. First two terms in brackets. Common factor the coefficient of the x squared. And then create the perfect square trinomial in the brackets by adding half of the middle term squared. Half of 8 is 4, squared is 16. So that's now a perfect square trinomial, but we'll have to subtract 16 to keep it equivalent to the line above. We don't want that negative 16, so I'll take it out of the brackets by multiplying it by the 3 in front. So I'll have 3 times the perfect square trinomial, x squared minus 8x plus 16. The negative 16 being multiplied by three gives me negative 48. And then when I factor the perfect square trinomial, the numbers that multiply to 16 and add to negative eight are negative four and negative four. So it would factor to x minus four times another x minus four, which I'll write as x minus four squared. And negative 48 plus 11 is negative 37. So my vertex is at four negative 37. My axis of symmetry would be at x equals 4. Since the a value is positive, once again, it opens up. Domain, for any quadratic, the domain is x can be any real number. The range, y could be anything as long as, since it opens up, it's going to be greater than or equal to whatever the y coordinate of the vertex is. In this case, negative 37. It'll never be below the vertex. When making my table of values for points to graph it, I'll put the vertex in the middle. 
and then I'll choose a couple points to the left of the vertex and to the right of the vertex, and then I'll have enough points to get a good idea of what the shape of this quadratic is. So we're going to plug each of these x values into either standard or vertex form. My vertex form is right here, so I'll use that. If I plug 5 in, make sure you follow bed mass, do the brackets first, 5 minus 4 is 1. Then do the exponent, 1 squared is 1. Then do the multiplying, 3 times 1 is 3. And then do the subtracting, 3 minus 37 is negative 34. So since parabolas are symmetrical, I know that's going to be the y value to the left of the vertex as well. And now I'll plug in 6. If I plugged in 6, 6 minus 4 is 2. Squared is 4. Times 3 is 12. Minus 37 is negative 25. So to graph this one, I think I'm going to need to make my y-axis go by 5s. So I will label every other spot with going up by 10. 10, 20, 30. My x-axis, I think I can just go by 1s. I'll label every other spot going by 2s. And then I'll plot my points. 4, negative 37 would be about here. And then we have points at 5, negative 34 and 3, negative 34. And then 6, negative 25 and 2, negative 25. I see that I could fit a few more points on here, so I'll do that quickly. Let me just see what I would get if I plugged in 8. If I plugged in 8, 16, 48, I'd get 11 as my y coordinate. So I'd plot one here at 11. So that means at 0, I would have the same thing. It would be 11. I think that's good enough to get the shape. There's my quadratic. Last example. This one's a little tricky because it gives it to you with the terms in a different order than normal. Let me start by putting the term with the x squared first. And now notice there's no constant term, but that's okay. We'll still follow the same process. We'll put the first two terms in brackets. Then we'll common factor out the coefficient of the x squared, which is negative three. Then we'll create the perfect square trinomial by doing half of two squared. So half of two is one. Squaring it, I get one. So I will add one to create the perfect square trinomial, but then also subtract one to keep it equivalent to the line above. And I'll get that negative one out of the brackets by multiplying it by the negative three in front. So I have negative three, x squared minus two x plus one. And that negative one out of the brackets is going to be a positive three because it's getting multiplied by negative three. And our last step is to factor that perfect square trinomial. The numbers that multiply to 1 and add to negative 2 are negative 1 and negative 1. So I'd have x minus 1 times another x minus 1. So x minus 1 squared. And then plus 3. So my vertex is 1, 3. The axis of symmetry is x equals 1. This time, since a is negative, the quadratic is going to open down. No restrictions on the domain. x could be any real number. The range, since it opens down, I know the y values of any point on the quadratic are going to be equal to the y value of the vertex or less. So y will be less than or equal to 3. When making my table of values, I'll put the vertex in the middle and choose a couple x coordinates to the left and a couple to the right. I'll plug those x values into, I'll use my vertex form. If I plug in 2, I would get 0, which means if I plugged in 0, I would also get 0. If I plugged in 3, I would get negative 9, which means if I plugged in negative 1, I would also get negative 9. I'll plot these points, and then I'll connect them using the shape of the parabola, and there we have it. So that's the end of the completing the square lesson. Make sure you try out the practice problems for this so that you get good at completing the square.